Hello, my name is Valerie O'Neill. I work in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital in Dublin. Um, I'm the clinical nurse specialist. So today we're going to give you an overview of the Irish service, the care pathways involved, some support measures we have in place, and the role of the clinical nurse specialist. Um, firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Joanne, Melody and Okimal Ireland for the invitation and the opportunity to be involved today. We're really grateful, so thank you. Just an overview or a little background of the service first. A dedicated ocular oncology service was established in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital in conjunction with St Luke's in Ratgar in 2010. Prior to this, all patients were referred to St Paul's in Liverpool for management of uveal melanoma with the exclusion of those treated by primary enucleation. Established in 2010 in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital by Mr Noel Horgan, um, we have four ophthalmologists, one consultant, one medical ophthalmologist and two residents. Um, a clinical nurse specialist, the radiation oncologist is based in St Luke's in Rakhar. All of our treated patients are referred to medical oncology teams locally and our pathologist Dr Susan Kennedy is based on site in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital and we have nationwide referrals. Just a few facts first and um, the exact cause is unknown of uveal melanoma um, patients are diagnosed clinically through ultrasound, colour photos and OCT. The incidence has remained stable for years. So all um, patients are referred to a new oncology clinic in the Eye and Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital um, for their initial assessment. They are diagnosed and uh, subsequently follow a specific care pathway. These pathways involve either radiation, which would be either brachytherapy, which happens in St Luke's Hospital in Dublin, or proton beam, which would happen in the Royal Liverpool University Hospital in the UK, or surgical excision, which involves nucleation. And um, this would happen in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital in Dublin. And all of our patients are referred to a medical oncology service for surveillance. Just an overview of with the bracket therapy. Um, this would involve either the use of ruthenium or iodine plaques, depending on the thickness of the tumour. This treatment occurs in St Luke's Hospital in Rakyar. Um, it is described as high intensity localised tumour control. All follow up care occurs in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital. Plaques are inserted under general anaesthetic. Patients stay as an inpatient when the plaque is in place and the plaque stays in place between four and seven days and the patient is nursed in a single room. So this care pathway um, involves or incorporates the steps of a patient diagnosed with a uveal melanoma that's suitable for bracket therapy. You can see their patients are diagnosed in the new oncology clinic in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear. A requisition or for radiation is sent to the physicians and the radiation consultant. Um, a plan is made. The patient is preoperatively assessed by the clinical nurse specialist. Um, the, a pre-treatment meeting between the patient and the radiation oncologist occurs. This is happening remotely now or online. The insertion and removal of the plaque occurs in St Luke's and all subsequent post-operative post-op treatment appointments happen in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear and all patients are referred to the medical oncology teams for um, surveillance. If the patient's pathway is to follow the proton beam treatment, the patients are referred to St Paul's Eye Hospital in Liverpool and Clatter Bridge Cancer Centre for proton beam radiation. Um, approximately five to six patients are sent over per year. It's very effective in achieving local control. All patients are followed up in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital post-treatment and all patients are referred to the Medical Oncology Service for surveillance going forward. 
And if the patient's pathway is to follow the enucleation pathway, this is surgery for larger tumours that are not amenable to radiation. This takes place in the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital. The patient stays overnight in the inpatient ward. A pressure dressing is in place for one week post-treatment and the patient are assessed by the ocularist about six to eight weeks post-procedure for a fitting of a prosthesis. So this pathway dictates the steps for a patient diagnosed with uveal melanoma undergoing enucleation. The patients are, that are diagnosed with uveal melanoma are seen in the new oncology clinic um, and a bed booking office and consultant confirm the day of the procedure. The patient is pre-op assessed before their um, before their surgery, the, the CNS will meet with the patient and family on day of the procedure and surgery is completed post procedure. The patient is seen on the ward the day after the procedure and the CNS will meet them then a week later to remove the dressing. And then they're seen by the consultant in the clinic about five weeks after that. And again, all patients are referred to the medical oncology um, service for surveillance. Just some research um, that was completed in recent years. An epidemiology study of the uveal melanoma in Ireland was completed by Caroline Bailey in 2016. And in 2019, uh, Dr. Olia Scannell completed a quality of life in uveal melanoma patients in Ireland at single centre survey. Some baseline characteristics from the epidemiology study. You can see there that the mean age is 61.7 um, and the majority of are the patients that are sent to the new oncology clinic are initially seen by an ophthalmologist in another hospital. So from the epidemiology study, 64% um, of the patients were treated with bracket therapy as a primary treatment. 27% of the patients were treated with nucleation and 8% of the patients were treated with proton beam radiation. Just an overview of the role of the CNS, the patient and their relatives need an ex expert guidance in the management of the many threats that they face, metastatic, risk, visual handicap and perceived disfigurement. The CNS meets with the new oncology patients in the outpatient clinic completing their initial assessment and supporting the patient through their care pathway once a decision has been made regarding a treatment plan. Just some other aspects of the role continued. The CNS coordinates the care between both sites, the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital and St Luke's in Macar. We assist with surgical procedures in St Luke's Hospital. We meet with all enucleation patients and their families on diagnosis pre and post operatively in the ward and outpatient setting. We coordinate the care for the proton beam patients, patients with St Paul's in Liverpool, and we act as a resource for all nursing staff and the multidisciplinary team. Some of the supports that we have in place so we have a full time clinical nurse specialist. And we, as a team, are committed to supporting the patients along the care pathway. We have amazing support from our medical social worker, both on site when patients are diagnosed, and who also can organise community support for patients post treatment. Um, in recent years, we have rolled out a Cancer Thrive and Survive program, which is a national program run through the Irish Cancer Society. Um, we run, we have organised it. Um, to be run in the eye and ear hospital, uh, considering recent uh, challenges with COVID, this is going to be rolled out online going forward. Just in conclusion, our treatment approach is tailored to size and location with good results. The availability of both ruthenium and iodine plaques allows stratification of treatment based on size and thickness. And we were very grateful for our collaboration with Liverpool. This additional service and expertise offers our patients enhanced tumour control. Just some references we have. And once again, I would like to thank Ocumel Ireland for the invitation and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Noel and Valerie. My name is Brendan Lynch and I am one of the founding fathers of Ocular Melanoma Ireland. Today, I would 
like to briefly mention my late beautiful wife, Belinda. Belinda was one of Noel's patients back in the early days when he was first introducing brachytherapy into Ireland. It turned out that Belinda's tumour was too big for Noel's tool set at the time. It was put to us that they would like to go to Germany and get their hands on stronger, bigger sets of tools. I, as a plan B, had a team of doctors on standby in Harley Street, London, ready to go at a moment's notice. However, Belinda said to me that she trusted Noel and felt good about where she was. So I was stood down. Sure enough, the parts arrived a few weeks later and the procedure went ahead. So Belinda, as a patient, broke new ground in Ireland in the ocular melanoma treatment space. As some of you know, she went on to break further new ground in the UK, in particular with the Delcat treatments, setting new survivorship records and being a pathfinder for others to follow. Today, I would like to think that we are all Belinda's in this ocular melanoma symposium. And on that positive note, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Aileen O'Mara, Advanced Nurse Practitioner in Oncology at St. Vincent's University Hospitals, Dublin. Take it away, Aileen. Hi, my name is Eileen Amara, Advanced Nurse Practitioner in Oncology here in St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin. Uh, today I'd like to give you a brief overview of the patient's pathway when they are referred to our oncology clinic uh, with the diagnosis of uveal melanoma. Uh, St. Vincent's Hospital is the main oncology centre in Ireland which manages a surveillance programme to detect recurrence and to treat patients who do develop recurrence of their uveal melanoma. I work with Professor John Crown, medical oncologist, and we have close links with the team in the Ioneer Hospital. As my colleague uh, Valerie highlighted earlier, uh, when a patient has received their primary treatment for their uveal melanoma, they are referred to Professor Crown's team for ongoing surveillance uh, to detect development of recurrent disease outside the eye. So when a patient attends our clinic uh, for the first time, uh, they're assessed by a member of the oncology team and will always see Professor Crown. Um, our surveillance program is explained to the patient at that point. As you're likely aware, if uveal melanoma is to reoccur, it primarily reoccurs in the liver. So as per broad international guidelines, the primary focus of our surveillance program is on the liver. Uh, there's been much discussion internationally as to what mode of surveillance of the liver should be used, be it an ultrasound liver, CT liver or MRI liver. In our clinic, our preference is, MR, is, is an MRI liver uh, as it uh, gives a more in-depth view of the liver and has no radiation involved. Uh, thus, as part of our surveillance program, patients have an MRI liver every six months for the first five years and then yearly thereafter uh, for a number of years. Um, so prior to the outbreak of uh, COVID-19, uh, patients uh, were reviewed in our clinic. Uh, the results of the scans were discussed and the physical examination was performed. However, since the outbreak of the pandemic, uh, we, have now, we are now running our outpatient clinics virtually uh, when possible. Uh, thus, we are assessing patients by phone and scan results are given. Uh, this uh, appears to be working well and patients seem happy uh, with these clinics. Um, we felt it was um, important uh, to do virtual clinics to try and um, reduce patients' um, footfall to the hospital, thus hoping to you know, reduce the spread of the virus. Um, and as I say, it does work very well for a lot of patients as they can be traveling um, long distances. Uh, 
uh, to come to our clinic. But obviously, if there is any concern on their scan, we will see patients face to face and discuss ongoing management. If there is a suspicion um, on a scan, a patient's case can be discussed at our melanoma MDT. Uh, a liver biopsy will be, perfor be performed uh, where um, possible to ensure a definite diagnosis. If disease recurrence is confirmed, uh, Professor Crown will outline uh, various treatment options uh, to patients and their family. Uh, these may include surgery, uh, liver perfusion to the, uh, with chemotherapy, um, systemic uh, chemotherapy, uh, immunotherapy, or if no active uh, treatment is an option, um, we would make referral uh, to the palliative care team. Uh, the decision of what treatment uh, to use is based on the patient's uh, disease burden, performance status, and obviously the patient's um, own preference. Uh, Professor Crown will be discussing uh, treatment options in more detail in the live session. So I've given you a brief outline of the patient's pathway when referred to our clinic here in St. Vincent's. Um, obviously, if patients have any uh, concerns uh, in between um, clinic appointments, um, they're welcome to contact our team and uh, you know, we can re re review them sooner. So thank you very much for li listening. I hope I've uh, given uh, some idea of, of what to expect when you come to our clinic. Um, and obviously, if you have any further questions, uh, Professor Crown will be happy uh, to answer them in the live session. Thank you very much.